And I came in here hoping that you would tell me the truth. And this is not the truth, Jody. This is all I know. This is, does not make any sense. Were you at Travis's house on Wednesday? Absolutely not. I was, I was nowhere near Mesa. I was nowhere near no. Phoenix. You did. Nothing changes for me. You did. I'm just talking you're about, talking about just, just, just people I care about. You're talking about everything but how bad you feel about Travis. You only respond to my questions. If I were Travis, I would Travis. be very remorseful. I think that I, I've gotten the wrong picture of you. I think that, you know, you know, maybe I was wrong. Maybe maybe you are that cold blooded person. I can't breathe until you are There's nothing you can say that'll change my mind at this point. This is an elaborate story which does not make any sense. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this here video, you guys, we're going to examine the death of Travis Alexander at the hands of Jody Arias. Travis Alexander was a traveling salesman and motivational speaker. He and Jody began dating in 2007 and ended up in a long distance relationship. In 2008, Travis was found dead from what Jody Arias would say was self-defense. Was it though? When you think of crazy stalker X, think of Jody. Let's look at some interrogation footage, what she tried to frame the story as, and generally what the case is about. Come on, you've seen my videos before. Maybe. If you haven't, hey you and Travis was born in 1977 in Riverside, California. A case that's not in Canada or Florida? Weird. He was introduced at a very young age to the Church of Latter-day Saints. And then I, and then she's over here, so I'm looking at my peripheral because I don't want to turn this way. And I'm like, shh. And he's like, shut up, shut up, shut up. And I got this guy against my head. You know? He would go on to be a salesman and a motivational speaker for a multi-level marketing company. Jody, on the other hand, was born in Salinas, California in 1980. She showed an interest in photography at a young age, which continued throughout her adult life. Her childhood years are pretty unremarkable. However, she said she was an abused child, claiming her parents hit her with wooden spoons and a belt. Who didn't get the wooden spoon growing up? Travis met photographer Jody at a 2006 conference and hit it off. Before they parted, Travis, then 30 years old, and also a devout member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, urged Jody, 27 at the time, to read the Book of Mormon. Not the South Park guy's piss take, the, the actual book. Within months, Jody converted to Mormonism and the pair began a romance that Travis's friends thought was a bit, uh, toxic. When Travis broke up with Jody five months later, he told his friends he felt guilty about breaking his vow of premarital celibacy. Oh, naughty boy. Straight to hell. Yeah, um, over those five months, they exchanged 82,000 emails, which is insane. According to Jody, the relationship ended because she did not trust Travis. She would later allege that Travis was a sexual deviant who was physically and sexually abusive to her and that he wanted her to be his personal slave. Yet, weirdly enough, if he was like that, their breakup didn't end their contact. After ending their official relationship, Jody and Travis would keep seeing each other until Jody eventually moved back to California, Travis, Arizona. He also began seeing other women. And Jody, she didn't like that. This, I guess you could say, short, fiery relationship, only five months. Um, after Jody was a lot more invested than Travis was, she would do anything for him, and also to him, including killing him. Around this time, Jody would slash his tires when she popped down to Arizona, hacked into his Facebook account, stalked him on dates, and sent a vicious, anonymous emails to the women he was seeing. He also told his friends that one night at his house, uh, Jody snuck through the doggy door while he was sleeping. 
which is hilariously creepy. In a blog entry, Travis wondered if some date might have an axe murderer penned up inside her. He uh, already dated her. He also told his friends, uh, don't be surprised if I end up dead one day, which is a normal thing to say. However, despite all this, bizarrely, Travis and Jody continued to maintain their sexual relationship. In early 2008, Travis told people that Jody would join him for a work-related trip to Cancun, Mexico, scheduled for June 15th. However, a few months later, Travis asked to change his traveling companion to another female friend. Then, on May 28, uh, 2008, a burglary occurred at Jody's grandparents' house. Uh, she also lived in that home too. Among the objects missing was a 25 caliber automatic Colt pistol, which was never recovered. Wonder where it went to. On June 2nd, 2008, Jody rented a car from Rent-A-Car in Redding, California, and drove to Travis's home in Mesa, Arizona, where they took pictures of them having sex together in various nude poses. I couldn't find those pictures. Sorry, lads. Well, that's a lie. I did find them, but I don't want my friggin' channel deleted. Come on, guys. Travis then missed an important conference call on the evening of June 4th. On June 7th, Jody arrived back in California and returned the rental car. Before she did, while on her way back there, she met with friends in Utah, and one said he noticed Jody had dyed her blonde hair brown, and she had cuts on her hands. Weird. And when she returned the car, the employee there noticed that the floor mats of the car were missing, and that there were red stains on the front seat. On June 9th, with no one having seen Travis for a while and having been able to reach out to him, uh, some of his friends decided to pop by his house. Entering the house, they found pools of blood in the hallway to the bathroom, where his body was discovered in the shower. When the police arrived, his friends specifically mentioned Jody as a possible suspect, telling them all the things Travis had said, her stalking, hacking his social media, slashing his tires. What's going on? Um, a friend of ours is dead in his bedroom. We, we hadn't heard from him for a while. We think he's dead. His roommate just went in there and and he said there's lots of blood. I didn't go in, but I, I can give you the phone to someone who went in there. Can, yes, please, can you? Hello. Hi, so what's going on? He's, uh, he, he's dead. He's in his bedroom okay. in, in the shower. Okay. How did this happen? Do you have any idea? No, we have no idea. Everyone's been wondering about him okay. for well, a few said, days. She said that there was blood. So is it coming from his head? Did he cut you know, his head? I, it, I, it's all over the place. Is there any weapons around? I no, I don't know. I not that I saw. I need all of you outside. Has he been threatened by anyone recently? Yes, he has. Okay. He has a he has an ex girlfriend that's been bothering him and and um following him and slashing tires and things like that. And do you know the ex girlfriend's name? Um, um, do you remember? It? Yeah. What's what's his ex girlfriend's name? That's Taylor. What's that? And do you know if he's ever reported it to the police? Um, her, his, her name is Jody. No, he hasn't reported anything about Jody's behavior. They also found the camera, which had the sexy time pics on it, which were taken at approximately 1.40 p.m. on June 4th. The final photograph of Travis Alive showed him in the shower, taken at 5.29 p.m. that day. Photos taken moments later show Travis profusely bleeding on the bathroom floor. A bloody palm print was discovered along the wall in the bathroom hallway. It contained DNA from both Jody and Travis. Jody was arrested at her home on July 15th and extradited back to Arizona in September. Investigators say that Jody stabbed Travis 27 times slit his throat and shot him in the head with the gun that was reported stolen from her grandparents' house.
She said that during that trip she took from Redding, California, she never went near Travis's house. I'm talking to a lot of people, and everybody's pointing a finger at you. I know. You know, everybody is saying, I don't understand what happened to Travis. I don't know who killed him. But you need to look at Jody. And sometimes the simplest answers are the correct ones. And that's one of the reasons I started looking at you a little bit closer. I'm kind of just putting two and two together. Well, I and, and, it, and it kind of matches. Was it Monday, the second? Right? And you didn't get to Utah until Thursday, you told me. Yeah, I got to Utah on Thursday. So Thursday, that's the fifth? Mm, yeah, I think so. so. Monday is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. Okay, so we have, it's like 48 hours there, but, well, obviously three days, but there's plenty, there's 48 hours. So this trip took you a little over 48 hours there. Mm -hmm. um, I have a problem with this trip. Well, I went okay. first, too. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know you went down here. I've gone over this trip over and over in my mind and on paper. And even if, if there's still 20-some-odd hours, even if you pulled over to sleep a couple of times. Oh, did I tell you that I got stranded? Yeah. Okay. You mentioned that. If you slept for 10 hours, I only slept for here and hours. here, it would still leave 18-some-odd hours something else okay this is what people are focusing on is this trip that you took i did not go near his house isn't there are there i pulled your cell records your cell phone was turned off between here and here okay but the last place it pulled it was here the next place it turned on was here what does that show me oh well i began oh no 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 is there plenty of time for you to do that? Yes. And I do I believe that you had come to visit Travis? Yes. I truly believe it. Did you have the opportunity? Yes. You were traveling alone. There's no other witnesses. Your phone just happened to turn off from here to here. Well, I didn't turn it off physically, but it died. And then it magically you, God, you found your charger here? It was it was under the act under the seat of the passenger side. And it was when I was... When you were lost, you couldn't have maybe pulled over and found it? Or well, I did finally start looking when I was stranded. I wasn't even close to him. Um, what if I could show you proof you were there? Well, Would that change your mind? I wasn't there. To be honest with you, Joey. I was not at Travis's house. I was not. You were at Travis's house. You guys had a sexual encounter, which... There's pictures. I know you know there's pictures because I have them. I will show them to you. Okay. So, what I'm asking you is for you to be honest with me. I know you were there. Are you sure those pictures aren't from another time? Positive. There's so much evidence in that house. So much. And it all points to you. I. I lived there. I was there for months and months and months. You're here. Let's go to the scene. You left palm print at the scene. In blood. What's going on there? Well, I can explain the blood and the hair. I don't know about my left palm print. How can you explain the blood and the hair? Well, because I used to bathe in Napoleon all the time. and um, You haven't been there since April, right? Mm-hmm. Well, He's had the house clean several times since then. And this hair was not just a, a hair, you know, from the shower or something. This hair was stuck with blood. It obviously had blood on it. At the time, it got stuck where it, where it ended up. My There's no way. All over. There's no other hair. Can you take place. Can you take a hair sample? And we like, have your DNA. No, no, but I mean, like, you know how they can do drug tests and find out when things are done? No, can you? We can't do that. Can't you measure the time? We maybe? have DNA matching that hair, too. Okay, I know, but my And hair. that hair had a follicle on it, and that means that that hair wasn't there very long. The follicle will usually dissipate and go away after a 
after a certain time. It'll fall off the hair itself. Well, then I would okay. brush my Joe, hair. I mean, this one you absolutely cannot can, cannot explain that way. You either had blood on your hand and you touched the wall, or there was blood on the wall and you touched the blood. Could my palm print have already been there and I touched it? Joey. Joey. This is over. This is absolutely over. You need to tell me the truth. Listen, the truth is I did not hurt Travis. Okay, so we're Joey, safe. You can continue to do this, okay? The records check shows you that you uh, just reported a a gun stolen, 25 auto, just happens to be the same caliber as the weapon used to kill him. If you want, I can show you some pictures of him. Do you want to see pictures of him? Part of me does and part of me doesn't. Why, because you don't want to remember? No, I Joey. just, there's a morbid curiosity. Joey. I wanted to know how he died. We can keep playing these games over and over again. I'm not going to believe you. When you start telling me the Listen. truth, then I can believe you. But I can't deny this evidence. I can't. The trip you took doesn't make sense. The opportunity was there. Your pictures on that date with him. Your blood is in the house. Mixed with his. Mixed. Not alongside, but mixed. Your hair is there with blood. And your palm print is there in blood. I, it's over. I wonder how am I still here? Now I don't want to move. It's a thing. It might change my memory. And I won't go. She would later change her story and say she was there at Travis's home, but saw two unidentified individuals break in and attack him. She then ran out of the house, leaving Travis, and didn't look back. Well, that's a shitty thing to do, if it happened, which it didn't. What was the first thing they did to him? You were there. You saw it. What was the first thing I actually you didn't see it, I heard it. You're telling me that some other people were there. You know how, that, how much that concerns me? I don't know. They... They got my address. And they know where my family is. Sorry. So you're trying to say you're doing this to protect your family? Why would someone do this to you? Get to him? I don't think they really intended to do anything to me. You tell me this, but you give me no reason. They didn't discuss much. They just argued. About what? About whether or not to kill me. For what reason? Because I'm a witness. A witness of what? Him. Of Travis. Of Travis's murder. Yeah, but I didn't really witness it. Didn't see much. I just... Okay. I just um. Ugh. You need to make this believable, because it is not believable to me right now. So what you're telling me about two people coming in, or however many people coming in and taking care of him and letting you go, it's just so far-fetched. I can't believe it. Why would they do this to him? What were they arguing about? What did they say? Their details. They didn't say a lot. They were white Americans, from what I could tell. No, I ran into the closet, because like, there's two doors, and they were sort of in the hallway already. And he stopped me. And he didn't touch me, he was just held the gun to my head and he was like, you don't go anywhere. And he told, he told the other girl to finish it, I didn't see. Um, but he was like, and he was going like this, with my own illustration. And he said, he said, you ever, 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 Say anything about this. Two, two people come in, first two white males, and then later you change it to. No, I don't um, think I ever said white males. Yes, you did. When? At the beginning of the story. Well, it was one. And then you change it, oh no, one's a female. I was female all the time. I said I wasn't sure at first, but you could tell by their build. Okay. That doesn't make any sense to me. And there's no reason anybody would go after him. There's nothing in his past, nothing in his, at that time that he was going through that would cost somebody to do that to him. And the fact that they left you alive and let you go, that never happens. Jody pled not guilty to first degree murder. She later admitted to killing him, which is something, but only in self-defense. The attorney's office, they solved the death penalty. The prosecutors described Travis as a good man, 
who was seduced and then stalked by Jody, and killed by her in a jealous rage when she learned he was dating other women. However, Jody's defense said incorrect. They said that when Jody had enough of his pushiness, I guess you could say, Travis was able to rope her back in. Apparently, he was so possessive he would make her wear this shirt. I mean, whatever you think, that's a weird ass shirt, either by a jealous girlfriend or a possessive boyfriend. Months before the trial began, uh, Jody told the judge she wanted to represent herself. The judge allowed it so long as there was a public defender present at the trial. A few weeks later, and get this for the ultimate attempted character assassination, Jody attempted to get letters into evidence, which she claimed were written by Travis. In the letters, Travis uh, admitted to being a pedo, but then the letters were tested and revealed to be forged. Within days of the discovery that the letters weren't real, uh, Jody told the judge she was uh, way over her head. No shit. Man, more or less said, fuck it, I tried that, that didn't work. Bring back in the professionals and her legal team were reinstated, which is hilariously shitty. The trial against Jody Arias began on January 2nd, 2013, with the defense arguing she killed in self-defense. When he slams you down onto the ground, after you drop the camera, how do you feel? I was scared, so he's freaking out, I'm freaking out. I rolled, like I said, I rolled off to my left and began to run down the hallway. And I could hear him fall. I mean, I could hear his footsteps chasing me. Were you scared when he was chasing you? Yeah, I didn't want him to grab me again. What were you scared that he would do? Who knows? At that point, he had already almost killed me. I wasn't thinking when he almost killed me before that I was going to possibly die. I was just thinking I couldn't breathe. No air. That's all I could think of before I passed out. But it was later on that I realized that I could have died if he just held on to my neck a little longer. So I didn't want that to happen. I grabbed the gun. I ran out of the closet. He was chasing me. I turned around and we were in the middle of the bathroom, pointed it at him with both of my hands. I thought that would stop him. If someone were pointing a gun at me, I would stop. But he just kept running. He got like a linebacker. He got kind of low and grabbed my waist. But before he did that, as he was lunging at me, the gun went off. I didn't mean to shoot him or anything. I didn't even think I was holding the trigger. I just was pointing it at him. And I didn't even know that I shot him. It just went off and he was, he lunged at me and we fell really hard against the tile toward the other wall. The prosecution argued it was a crime of jealousy and anger, saying that Jody became increasingly upset after Travis broke up with her and continued to decline her requests to get back together as a couple. She flew into a fit of rage when she learned Travis was dating someone else. Jody spent 18 full days on the stand and talked about being abused by her parents, shared intimate details about her sex life with Travis, and described how the relationship had become verbally and physically abusive. During the trial, lead prosecutor Juan Martinez argued that Travis suffered through excruciating pain and ultimately died when Jody slashed his throat, cutting his common corroded artery, jugular vein, and trachea. She made sure she killed him by stabbing over and over and over again, and then finishing him off by slicing his throat. It is also sure that during this attack, Mr. Alexander suffered. Mr. Alexander suffered pain every time the knife went into his body, every time the knife blade struck the back of his head, and when the blade went down to his throat, it was certainly also extremely painful. As he laid there, still seeing, still breathing, he could see up there this knife, this woman, this blade coming towards him. Only death could relieve that pain. Only death could relieve that anguish. And that is especially cruel. It is something that brings in their mind is Christ. They know that these are the agonized cries of a wounded animal who's about to be killed. And that's how they think of it. They also can't help feeling as he crawled away down the hallway 
And it's something that they hope that it was unconscious when she took that knife for the last time. They hope that he's unconscious. But based on what they see or what they saw in this court, they know that he wasn't. They know that he was still alive. They knew that he was still feeling after he had crawled all the way down the hallway and came down to the carpet. They knew he was still conscious. And the defendant took that knife and slashed his throat wide open. And that almost makes them crazy. But think that their brother had suffered so many stab wounds. And then, as a coup de grace, they have him feel that blade one last time. And at that point, they are thankful that he wasn't feeling anymore. But what they can't get out of their mind is the brutality as she dragged him back down the hallway and put a bullet in his head. After deliberating for 15 hours, the jury found Jody guilty of first-degree murder. The State of Arizona versus Jody Ann Arias, verdict count one. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn in the above entitled action upon our oaths do find the defendant as to count one, first-degree murder, guilty. Five jurors find premeditated, zero find felony murder, seven find both premeditated and felony. Signed, four person. Is this your true verdict? So say you want it all? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the clerk is now going to ask each of you a question. Please answer yes or no. Juror number one, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number two, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number three, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number four, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number six, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number seven, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number nine, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number 12, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number 13, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number 14, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number 16, is this your true verdict? Yes. Juror number... Just a couple of minutes ago, you heard the verdict from the jury. What are your thoughts? Um, I think I just went blank. Just, um... I don't know. I just feel overwhelmed. Was it unexpected, do you think, this verdict? It was unexpected. For me, yes, because there was no premeditation on my part. I can see how things look that way, but I didn't expect the premeditation. I could see maybe the felony murder because of how the law is written, but I didn't ex the whole time I was fairly confident I wouldn't get premeditation because there was no premeditation. It seemed, and you got a lot of questions from the jury, it seemed like some of those jurors didn't believe what you were telling them, didn't believe your story. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? I can understand that, I think, because of what I was, the lies that I told in the beginning to try to cover up this, cover up that, hide. Did you avoid eye contact with Travis's family while you were in there? Did you make eye contact? And what are your thoughts on that? Um, I typically avoided eye contact. Travis comes from a family where they all sort of look a lot alike. So when I see their faces, I see Travis and I see the man that abused me, and I don't want to look at that. Do you have a sense of where the, the public feeling is about you, that you're liked or not liked? I mean, I get the sense that there is great division on both sides, but I believe the majority is against me. A psychologist once explained to me that society has this need to um, persecute people. They get some sort of gratification from it, so there might be something going on there. The worst outcome for you? Well, the worst outcome for me would be natural life. I would much rather die sooner than later. Longevity runs in my family, and I don't want to spend the rest of my natural life in one place. I'm grateful for my defense. They've worked very hard. Um, not 100%, but they've worked very hard. What would you change? Um, there is a man who saw me with bruises all over. I would have made every effort to find him, and they didn't. What would you like to say to all the people who seem to really dislike you, even, even hate you? Um, well, maybe I should be flattered that they focus on me so much. If they dislike me so much, then why am I always on their radar? On May 23rd, 2013, during the sentencing phase, the jury were unable to reach a unanimous decision. A second jury was convened on October 20th, 2014, 
but they too were deadlocked 11 to 1 in favour of the death penalty. That left the sentencing decision up to the judge, although now the death penalty was off the table. On April 13th, 2015, Jody was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. She is currently living it up in the Arizona State Prison Complex, Perryville in Goodyear, Arizona, where she is like a level 5 maximum security inmate, so like, top of the list of like, shitty people in prison. Though prison seems to be a grand old time, here's a phone call she made in 2016 to Kareem Lefty Williams, a rapper who produced a video about her in order to bring awareness to PTSD and domestic violence. A lot of hate. A lot, a lot of hate. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Haters are gonna hate. <laughs> you, I, th I, think, I think me and you are probably the most hated man and woman on, on earth right now, honestly. It's all good. If this is what it's like to be hated, keep hating. <laughs> coming in my direction, I can't even respond to it all. Yeah, it's the haters who have a problem. This case was a real hit with the news media, uh, mainly due to how sexualized it was. Lurid details about this case, they were posted everywhere, giving everyone a chub. But it really is about the dangers of over-jealousy leading to a particularly gruesome crime. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, please let me know your thoughts on this case in the usual place. If you'd like to see some more of my videos, uh, please subscribe if you'd like to. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, and if you want to see more updates about stuff, um, my Twitter and Instagram are somewhere down below. Also, uh, my Patreon, which I don't really talk much about, but uh, there's like an exclusive Patreon-only video there, and I'm also doing an Ask Me Anything there. Also, so if you'd like to check that out, you can. Thanks again for watching. Take care of yourselves. I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Mike out.